and debate it for another two years on what's the best way of doing that. If they don't find it to be the best possible way, fair enough. But if they think there is value in it, please go ahead and start you know, pressing the pedal because otherwise, again, we're just going to lose valuable time. And I'll just give you one example. Uh, this may not be this year's data, but certainly two years ago, every single month, one million people turned 18 in India. So that means that's the sheer volume of people who are leaving school age and getting into some sort of working age every single month just in India. So if you're going to take six months to debate when you already know that there is high potential for a technology to help these people, I think you should do it. Amazing. Good answer. How important is collaboration with other researchers and institutions in your work? Collaboration is important. I'll give you a very candid answer here. Right. I go a little bit deep. So collaboration is very important here. I think some of the biggest breakthroughs have happened because people have been willing to share their research. Researchers and scientists always do that. That's uh, one of the hats I wear and my co-founder wears. Uh, companies don't do that. We've been doing it till now. OpenAI, etc. did it. And if you know, now they have stopped publishing. Google has stopped publishing. I think that's going to be a problem. Um, but there are also reasons for that, because also as technology matures, you also have friction between superpowers and countries. That's one of the reasons why uh, they may be stopping to do that. But I think collaboration as a whole has more to offer to society. And I think the entire open source movement, Lama 3.1 just came out from Meta, which is open source. Uh, yeah. They've given that out free to the world, right? And it's just beating uh, GPT and Claude 3. For those of you who are sort of geeky in this space, it's beating them, uh, these two models, in a lot of performance areas. I so, switched. <laughs> exactly. See? Yeah, so I switched. Switch. And, and that's the value. That's the value that this can give. <laughs> exactly. See? Yeah, so I switched. Switch. And, and that's the value. That's the value that this can give. But there are, of course, risks. We have to be very, very open about that because you switched, I switched, somebody naughty may have also switched. So. <laughs> it's awesome. I'll, I'll save it. Okay. Can you talk about any partnerships or collaborations that have been particularly impactful in your projects? So the Innovate UK grant, that was obviously uh, one of the very important stepping stones in our journey that really gave us the first sort of capital push that we needed. Um, I'll just name two more. Uh, the UNHCR camps, that was the first sort of UN body that trusted us, uh, you know, with BCF in collaboration. Yeah. That led us, led to opening to UNICEF, et cetera. So that was again very important, opening to UNICEF, et cetera. So that was again very important. We've also been supported by a accelerator called Dohe, uh, who, you know, give a lot of support for free. There is no equity, there is nothing involved. Really appreciate their work as well, and they are really dedicated in spearheading edtech solutions, again, to make the world a better place. Mm, so good, so good. What are some ways the community can support the mission to upskill underserved students through AI? What I would say is talk about AI in general, look up on it and see where the benefits are. Uh, if you really want to support us, um, you can share our work. We are also always very open to talk to schools, NGOs, et cetera, to also support them. We do a lot of pro bono work as well. For instance, in Palestine, we often release our teachers uh, because the university system has broken down there. Students still need to study.